Hi, it's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you by Together 2012. We're an arts organisation based in the main Paralympic host borough of Newham, led by disabled artists. I'm Ju Gosling. I'm an artist and artistic director, also known as Ju90. And with me in my East London home studio, where she has been locked down since March, is our chair, the artist and documenter and indeed activist, Julie Newman. We're going to come back to East London for some audio description and a bit more introduction in a minute. But first, we're going to go to the other end of our long wheeled virtual sofa to that well-known part of East London, the West Midlands, where they will introduce themselves and also give us some audio description. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Josh Sergener. I'm one of the hosts of Together Unlocked, uh, and I am a PhD research student. Um, I have my, I think, trademark now. We've done enough episodes that I can trademark it. Uh, my kind of does whatever it wants, unruly, no shaped hair, because uh, it is long past a haircut. Um, and I today I stop for a minute and decide. So you and Julie are sporting haircuts, which basically and and not haircuts <laughs> you've not had your haircut what kind of style would that be surfer no not quite yeah, I, i'd love to come up with something surf. with s is it shielding something or i think kind of lost caveman maybe <laughs> <laughs> not sure judy would quite agree with that but sorry carry on um, uh, and then today i'm also wearing a um red very shiny red um kind of quilted down jacket um for no other reason than it's what i was wearing in the garden um about 20 minutes ago and i haven't got around to taking it off yet <laughs> it is really cold outside so i'm hoping it'll help me warm up a little bit um so yeah well thank you <laughs> okay boy okay <laughs> boy <laughs> oh i am robin surgeon i am business director at together 2012 um, also known as the artist Angry Fish, which will the sweatshirt I'm wearing will make that tiny bit more sense. So today I am sporting cut grey hair, uh, no rim, black armed glasses, um, and I have started. I'm practicing growing for my actual kind of lockdown look. I think when we all get completely and utterly um, lost in not knowing what day it is or anything again. We won't, we won't, because we have this fabulous show to keep us in mind of exactly when and where we are. Anyway. And there's so... always three others to tell us if we get the day wrong. <laughs> um, um, and I'm wearing um, a black hooded sweatshirt uh, with a grey lined hood. Um, but importantly, on the front is a really, really big logo that says, um, it's a, in the middle is a picture of a ballot box it's it's simply a white print on the black sweatshirt but it says black thursday at the top um which was an electoral response from myself i will not tell you which way for not wishing to be anything other than impartial um and it says angry fish and this was an album produced by angry fish but um as it is uh, potentially Black Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, depending on what happens in America over the next 72 hours. I thought I would wear it in deference to said election. Well, fair enough. I had a political pink T-shirt on on Monday. But today I'm wearing a long sleeved sort of mottled blue T-shirt. It's got a sort of, sort of turquoisey green with a bit of a sort of white bit and some orange logos um i got it in the sale but i'm not going to promote the brand i've got the other type of covered haircut so i have a self-styled corona crop let's just say it looks better on camera but not always um julie astonishingly still refuses to let me take the dog clippers to her but it's going to be a long winter so who can tell i've also got black plastic glasses black wrist braces and silver colored jewelry if any of you are expecting live captions today i'm very sorry to tell you that one of the invisible members of our team has 
suffered a bereavement. So this show, the recording which goes up in the evening, will be captured captioned by her team members at the weekend, but it won't be accessible as a captioned broadcast this week. So behind me, before I move on to Julie, we have a banner which has got graffiti representations of the different art forms we cover, both in terms of performances, exhibitions, screenings, workshops and other events led by disabled artists, free for absolutely everybody, and also creative workshops which we target year-round at disabled people. So we've got symbols of dance and drama and literature and spoken word, live music, visual arts, photography, filmmaking and much much more and we also have a teddy bear behind us but I'll introduce him a little bit later in the show. Julie. Uh, hello I, I'm i twins with Josh today as well as we do seem to be actually every time we come on to the TV. Uh, I have uh, grown hair, <laughs> there's just no other way to put it. Uh, so say that again. So is that grown with a W or an A? It could be either. It really could. Uh, it's uh, gold and silver. I have dark rimmed glasses. I'm wearing a, a lovely bright red T-shirt with a motif on the front which says garage. Uh, and it's got a spaceship and there's some writing underneath it which I cannot read. Um, Farms with dark matter engines. Good news, everyone. Shifting the entire universe. Well, that's us, isn't it? But I mean, it's basically I put it on partly because it's nice and bright, but partly in solidarity with the dogs <laughs> who every day that we're on air are locked up downstairs <laughs> re with restricted movements, um, but watching the television. And today's... Um, Today's offer was a, a wonderful um, film about space flight and aliens and all sorts of things. So I thought I'll, I'll do a bit of solidarity with Jazz and Precious. Regular viewers may see that Judy finds a way of getting space into everything. But if there was ever a time to feel that we were a child of the universe and part of a much, much bigger world, I do think it's now. So Wednesday, we particularly celebrate all things poetry. We'll also later have more information about our forthcoming festival, more information about our Join In From Home programme, our ever popular weekly clockwork Paralympics and our weekly sport and gaming report from Josh. And we're also going to talk just a little bit about lockdown. But before that, on a Wednesday morning, our pop up poetry club meets. Um, used to be in a physical space, but now it's a phone group. We call you and we pay for the calls. And it's really otherwise very, very much like we used to run it in um, East Ham except that you can join it if you can't get to East London and you have to produce your own refreshments but other than that we gather at 10 30 with a drink and a biscuit share some poems that we found they might be poems that members have written or they might be poems that they've found in other books by other people then they have a chat they stop ring off write a poem which is what we used to do in the club face to face and then call you back and people share their poems and there's a weekly theme and this morning's theme was indeed the morning so how did it go julie it was ever so funny we had a nice big group um but three different members mentioned food in their first poems so by the time the break came i think you know i was ready to eat the cat yeah sort of like so it was it was really funny i think we we're all feeling a little bit hungry well we've always had a policy at together of offering free food and snacks for all sorts of reasons but certainly the poetry group used to get through far more biscuits than the art club even though it was half an hour shorter so yeah i can well believe that yeah. and how what was the range of poems um they were great there was uh there were stories there were there were a couple of narratives um where people one person in particular was was telling a, a lovely story of their day and i think we've got that poem it's blake 
um, we had uh, readings by a couple of people who weren't able to continue for the second half, but they contributed to the first half. We had a contribution all the way from Sutton Coalfield, would you believe? Who would have thought? But there it was, and it, that was shared. And I think everybody really enjoyed that, Robin, because uh, it, it's a sort of like a, a recognition that the, the group have value and that people want to share. And I think that that was that really came over very strongly. Yes, I mean, I think it's worth just chatting briefly because we don't often about some of the principles of our clubs. And one of the things we do always say is it's they're founded on the basis that everybody has got something to learn and everybody has got something to teach. So they're facilitated by mid-career artists, but they're open to absolutely everybody. We don't run them in an institutional way, so you're not obliged to come every week. We take the mm. minimum of details that are required to keep our safer spaces policy and data privacy and so on. And I'm glad you said that about people feeling they could just come for the first half if necessary, mm. because again, we've always been very flexible. And I'm glad you said that about different forms of writing, because Together is very much about encouraging people to find your own creative voice. It's not about everybody doing the same thing or trying to achieve the same goal. It's all about the individual. And, you know, that sounds great. So could we start with your poem? Yes. Uh, would you bear with me? It's, I have to read it from my iPad. Um, just showing off that I have an iPad, of course. <laughs> Well, it's probably just as well because we have random cats in and out of both studios and indeed our virtual writer in residence, Penny Pepper. And the long, fluffy, black-haired cat, Leo, has now removed all but one of the magnets from the schedule that's hanging on the whiteboard. So once that last magnet goes... The schedule's we'll, gone. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back to the iPad again. So sorry, Judy. No, that's okay. Uh, it's called The Morning because that was the theme for today was the morning. The morning is here again. I sleep, I wake, the morning comes. The unseen magician snaps his fingers and the morning comes again. The sun is there, relentless, waiting to move through the day until comes sleep and as night fades, the morning comes again. The cycle relentlessly moves its course. Time passes, then comes again. The day eases on, but the blessed relief of sleep is fleeting. People change, they age, come and go. The seasons find their way around the world. Nature takes her course, and morning comes again. Our lives become full, full of laughter, full of life, sometimes tears. The course uncharted and our own, we set sail through each day. We stay, we move, dancing our way, then pausing, catching breath, waiting till sleep again, the night time silent, and morning comes again. However bright, flawed, inflated by praise, defeated or tired, the unseen magician will snap his fingers and morning will come again. I thought that was great. The only th there were, well, two things. Why was the magician male? And whatever happened to that thing that marks the morning, which is me appearing with a cup of tea? It, it didn't rhyme. <laughs> it didn't rhyme. <laughs> it's just the story of my life. I think if we go over to Sutton Coalfield for one of the participants' poems next, which of you wants to start? Uh, well, I'll, I'll just read this uh, very brief to the point one from Duncan Bridgestock. This is called Weenies. The witches had me in stitches and the little britches tricked or treated for riches. There we go. Told you it was brief. Oh, that certainly summed up the weekend. Do you want to just read it one more time? I will. The witches had me in stitches and the little britches tricked or treated for riches. Bit of a tongue twister there if you not careful. <laughs> yeah, Duncan's very clever like that. All of these poems will be up later today on our highlights and links page. You can find that on our website, www.together2012.org.uk. Under the Together Unlocked TV menu, there's a pull-down menu where you can also see pictures of the 
animal hosts as we describe them as we have absolutely no control over them whatsoever and also some anthems including our anthem for shielders which I think we might revive again on Friday perhaps or at least flag it up a little bit so I tell you what I think I shall go next and read this poem by Crystal Peasy, which again is just titled This Morning. This morning is very bright and very lovely blue sky, although it's very windy and the leaves are getting brown. And I wish the poetry was a bit longer, as most people take part in the first half. Until the second half, it always seems like we lose half of the people. In the second half, I don't think people do the full <laughs> session. Whether they have other things to do or whether they have appointments or they don't take a bath. <laughs> I think Crystal usually greets it with hooray, it's poetry, oh. doesn't she? she? She is one of our one of our enthusiastic poets. And what was really lovely was that during the time of lockdown, before we were able to restart the poetry clubs, she was writing poetry. She hasn't stopped writing poetry, you know, for the whole of the year. Uh, she's a very enthusiastic poet, as I said. Yes, and one of our younger poets as well. I mean, I think it's really useful to look back and say, well, we started this live stream on the 30th of March. And as people in the shielding category, life has changed very little since then. I mean, and particularly for Julie and I, because we haven't had emergencies, so we've been able to stay put. And we're still negotiating with the council for adequate supplies of PPE, so we haven't had any social care actually delivered indoors either. But things will still look a bit different. And as we say, and I'm gonna put it back on the top bottom of the screen again, if you stay home and you stay creative, I think that is definitely the way to stay well. You know, I wouldn't like any judgments on our behaviour at all times, but I think it has still been that critical point. And it's been so wonderful not only to continue with just about all of our regulars, but to have new people as well. And to have that sense, because I know some people have been just following the programme before we brought things back on Zoom, because we now have our art clubs back on Zoom on a Tuesday and Friday and the monthly clubs. So the second Monday, we have a photographers and filmmakers club that's coming up next Monday morning. And then two weeks after that, we'll have the dance club on Zoom. Yes, you can actually do a dance club on Zoom, although our dance club is based on producing masked dance for the screen. And we decided that three years ago. You think, how brilliant. You know, if there's one thing that we can guarantee to keep doing, it's producing masked dance for the screen. They weren't quite the masks we intended, but nonetheless. So if we go back to the West Midlands now, I think you've got Dwayne Bryan's poem, one of you. I have. Yeah, that will be me. So we have a, a, another piece from Duane. This is called The Light of the Day. You can open your eyes in the morning and you can see the light of day. You can open your eyes in the morning and you can see the sun make its way. Sunshine shining, shining through your window, the sun making its appearance. The light can slightly blind you but you never leave the sun behind you. It may make you hot, it may make you sweaty, but with the sun, you will always be ready. When the sun goes down, as it always does, to give you a comfort, think of the stars above. Oh, that was great, Dwayne. And indeed, today is the first time it's been sunny in London for a month. <laughs> you know, literally, it's the first time. So it's no wonder that everybody is remarking on it. Um, Julie, I think you've got one by Dawn Barber. I do. Um, and just pay tribute to Dawn for a quick second, if I may. She's another one of our poets who has been really quite rigorously following the schedule our, our together club schedule um, she doesn't have internet access so she's been writing poems every Wednesday every Tuesday she makes pom-poms or does some form of textile art and every Friday she does she does painting um, 
and I think you know sort of it it's it's so nice to be able to reconnect with Dawn um but I think as well that level of commitment is is really noteworthy um anyway this is Dawn um hello morning Morning is here, thankful for another day. You can feel the cold more now and the frost. You want to wrap the covers around you more in bed. You're glad to get dressed in your warm clothes and have a nice cup of tea. Morning is getting colder, but when there is a lot of sun shining through the window, it makes it feel better to face the winter. Yes, doesn't it just? Thank you for that, Dawn. And I think it's, I should say finally, I think it is finally, you've got Blake Jarrett Gibbons' prose piece, haven't you, Josh? Uh, yes, I do. So I'm going to read this off my phone, so forgive me for looking down. Can I yeah. ask you to get a little bit closer to the mic? And I've got mine if you want it as well. Of course you can, Julie. We'd Thank love you. to hear yours, Robin. So, yes. And finally, apart from Robin's poem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is the mo the morning this morning by Blake Jarrett Gibbons. The morning after last night, the night ideally I fell asleep from a good time of night, ready to open the curtains and face the day. The morning is like the warm up session, time to get ready and set, creating a mental plan of action. Radio goes on. Hurry up, ten thirty. I want to listen to Popmaster on Radio 2 and see how bad or good my musical knowledge is today. If I know an answer, I end up shouting at the radio. One correct answer. That's worth a cup of tea. A bonus guess correctly. That's got to be worth a treat of some sort. I used to be able to say I can party the night away. Now I rather say I can lie and cuddle my teddy monkey and dream the night away and arise in the morning. That hot soak in the shower helps feel lifted strain from the night and day before. A fresh clean feeling from the soap cleaning the outside, while the smell helps release any stresses and washes them away down the drain. Even if I wake up after an insomniac night or a night of broken sleep, a shower can help. The smell of a fresh start. Last night I feel I may have been dancing in the moonlight. On holiday, may wake up on the dock of a bay. A holiday, time to celebrate. Is this morning? A morning hangover or a morning ready for more fun? Maybe a swim or a run. If I'm alone, I could get a morning shift playing on the two-piece slots. The morning ready for adventure. What will I do today? Where will I go? On a normal day, it's time to take the dogs out into the greener greenery of the park walking under the trees and out on the open spaces, the quiet zone between the rush of the city. Better still when you can escape for the day away from that, hiding in the spaces of Hampstead Heath, or even an escape out of the city. Ah, oh, well, so beautiful, so sweet, nature singing in the birds and blowing in the breeze. How the sky shines is more noticeable now. Get the dogs back, clean all the mud off them. If they have been through a swim, try to dry them off. Hopefully, they're still not dripping. I wonder what music will be playing this morning through my radio. Music, fresh clean feeling, plan of action for the day, my mood and motivation. Now I have my warm session, my morning of preparation. I am ready for the day ahead. Oh, thank you. I think you read that beautifully, Josh. And thank you very much, Blake. As with all those prose pieces, they just take you on such a journey and see life through somebody else's eyes, which is also a really nice break. Um, in fact, I like the mess. I think the link with um, the dogs, and of course, as people with two assistants, dogs in the house, the dogs kind of really stuck in my mind more than anything else. That's a very good link through to our next piece, which is our weekly virtual nature watch, where we send out an assistance dog on our behalf to have a look at the outside world that is not safe for us to go out in. In East London, that actually includes our own backyard because they're too small for social distancing. And it has to be said that there was some research published yesterday as well, which warned that two metres is not actually the limit to which coughs and sneezes carry. You know, if there's a light breeze and somebody with COVID is coughing into the air, it can actually spread much further. So... 
yes, be aware of that sort of one size advice fits all that the government are thinking. I think about people with slightly bigger gardens than we have in Canning Town. So today we have sent pressures out into my backyard for the first time in a few weeks because we've been having reports from Merlo, the assistance dog in wonderful rural Norfolk. Now, this is an opportunity to have a look at urban Yes, Urban Newham, and um, Julie is going to explain what Precious is thinking as we go. So I'm just going to pop this up on screen. Precious has just trotted out outside. Um, this is her second trip because she messed the camera up the first time. She's been resting for too long from the camera work. She's having. She's a black-headed dog with an orange collar, uh, and you can. Little, see a little bit of her uh, harness. She's standing on the gravel, having a look around and a bit of a sniff of the air. Um, I'm not quite sure what she's expecting to happen, but perhaps she's waiting for her friend to come. Um, she's having a little mooch around, um, and then she's coming back. I think she's had enough. I think she's 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 um. Because this is her second run, I think she probably feels that she's done her bit for the day and for the show. Um, I've tried to encourage her to go again. She potters forward about a metre and a half. She's gone and had a sniff. And um, she's just sort of standing, having a little sniff around. Um, still looking. I was sure she's looking with her ears up for her friend to come. She's having a sniff of the, um, the plants. She's looking to see if I'm there, and then she's coming back. I think she really, she really does feel that she's done enough now because she did her previous filming, and if that wasn't good enough, too bad. <laughs> well, I think it, yeah, I think it's partly that, and um. But, I mean, I would have liked her to go, oh, look, there's been so much work done in the garden since I was last doing it. But I'm obviously going to have to do that little bit of audio description for myself. But, yes, it's a backyard, you know, in terms of the audio description, it's about 20 feet wide. It's square. It's got a patch of concrete covered with decking tiles painted green immediately outside the house. And then it's a gravel over mud with two little paths made of stone stepping. Well, not stone, but um, stepping stones made of some kind of no doubt plastic, really. And um, a half barrel water feature and quite a lot of plants, mostly in pots. So I hope that helps with the audio description. It's been hilarious, really, watching Precious when she's had the camera on, hasn't it? As you've interpreted it, you know, she spent a lot of the summer moving over to the garden furniture, standing on it and shouting. And when you talk about her friend, I don't think you mean her brother. You mean the dog that she <laughs> shouts and shouts for. And then it comes out and shouts at the bottom of the garden back, you know, which, of course, the neighbours absolutely love. Of course they do. Um, but certainly the dog does. The dog on the other side of the fence is a very enthusiastic, welcoming bark. And, of course, once they get started, goodness knows what they're talking about, but they do go on. <laughs> well, I think the other thing I did over the summer, because there was a glorious point where the neighbours both sides went back. Well, I think the neighbours one side moved out completely and the other side went back to their countries of origin for a few weeks. And I was able to get out there. And one of the things I did was put up an old mirror and she stands there and barks at her reflection. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a shame not to capture that on film, but we will try our best. What I'm going to do now is put on another short film about our Join In From Home programme, which is based on our website. But I just want to kind of flag up that at the end of that film, we look within the Join In From Home programme about the fact that we're publishing an anthology. And it's an anthology of poems with the theme of Together, it's very much on the deadline. We'd love anybody watching who wants to to join in and please spread the word. But we need those poems and indeed films of you speaking them should you wish to send them in as soon as you possibly can now. We'll be celebrating that book at the very end of our forthcoming Making History Together Disability History Month Festival. So the actual celebration of the book will be in, I think, 10th of November, Thursday, 10th of November. 
Is that right, Josh? 10th, 11th, whatever that Thursday is. But um, but we do need to get the book to the press as soon as possible. And everybody who contributes to the book will get a physical copy and it will be a nice book. So I'm going to put this video on now about how you can join in from home with poetry, but with a whole host of other activities too. Together 2012 is running a join in from home program from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. All of our activities can be enjoyed by families at home, but we also have some of our favourite activities here from our family activity days, which we usually hold in the school holidays. Card making with pens, stickers and paper is also popular. You can show someone you're thinking of them by making them a special card, and if it can't be delivered safely, then send, it with a send a photograph with a personal message or keep it till later. Here we have instructions for making a sock puppet, a storage jar or night light or a lunch box or storage box, all of which are really popular with our family activity days. And you can click on each of these links to get full instructions. So with the sock puppet, for example, you have lots of instructions with photographs to show you exactly what to do. Same with the storage jar. And same with the lunchbox or storage box. And you can see how effective it is just to use very, very simple techniques. Everyone is completely unique. The Pop-Up Poetry Club meets on a Wednesday morning. We also run regular poetry projects and poetry cafes. We're inviting you to write or sign a poem on the theme of Together and send it to us to share on social media. We're also going to be publishing an anthology of the Together poems in November and everybody who contributes will get a copy of the physical book. Great. Now, I know we didn't actually have time for Robin's poem, so what we're going to do is ask him to read it right at the end of the show. Is that OK with you, Robin? Yeah, that's I've been this everyone. afternoon and not this morning, but we can live with the cognitive dissonance of that, I think, quite nicely. So I just wanted to add that we have a much more extensive join in from home program on the website. Each day we do the show, we pick out various different things to highlight but do have a look at the website where you also have the full video of everything that we're offering if you'd rather watch the information on video. But now it is time for our weekly Clockwork Paralympics. And to give you a little bit of background before we introduce the performers, we've been running this since April, partly because there was no sport at all during the last lockdown. And yes, our West Midlands friends are Paralympians. Robin, indeed, is a multi-gold medalist. So it's nice to have a little bit of fun at their expense and reduce it all down to clockwork toys. But we're also taking part in that very, very serious thing, the International Virtual Bear Hunt inspired by Michael Rosen. On the bear hunt, you can either put teddy bears in the window for children to have a look at on their walks, or you can put teddy bears on screen. Now, I know a lot of children are still going to be in school during lockdown, but an awful lot aren't, and an awful lot are being sent home now in bubbles and things. So whether they're out on their daily exercise, bearing in mind that so many play centres and things are closed, or you're running a live stream yourself, it's kind of nice to just 
dig the teddies out, join in and bring that extra smile to some kids out there who, and probably indeed some adults as well. So which teddy bear is going to be representing Birmingham 2022, which is the Commonwealth Games? Hurrah, it's a real teddy. Yeah, this little G. And do you want to audio describe little G? So little G um, is a grey teddy bear, about eight inches tall probably, um, with a white face. Um, and he's wearing a, green, a Kawasaki green, if anybody knows what that is. It is the best green, by the way. Kawasaki green t-shirt um, with in very bright orangey red letters the words good luck which is why he is little g and our teddy bear i'm not sure whether we actually managed to come up with a name last time because of course so many of these teddies didn't have names before but he's an austrian teddy and he's dressed in very traditional austrian gear although of course i can't remember the words for these things but you've got the lederhosen you've got the lederhosen you've got the sleeveless jacket over you know embroidered felt sleeveless jacket over a white shirt he's got a magnificent hat with feathers and an edelweiss and a little hat band with flowers on and then he's got a rucksack on the back and um, i partly brought him out i have to say because as with everybody in the uk we're thinking about the people of austria and these are sad times, you know, this is a show with a lot of lightheartedness and humour, but it's here because we're living in difficult times and there's no point in forgetting about that. So he's very enthusiastic. They compete for the right to wear a medal, but as we cannot race our teddies, even if we were in the same room, we race clockwork toys to represent them. And this week's competitors are a clockwork frog and a clockwork hare. So you have a choice. You can either choose the competitor in my left hand or the competitor in my right hand, or you can choose the frog or the hare. Well, we, 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 we pre-chose, and it was Josh's choice this week, and it is whichever competitor is released from your left hand which will be on the right side of the screen as we're watching it anyway it was your choice well let's you can decide that whether you win or lose and of course the great thing about me with almost no short-term memory is i have no idea who won <laughs> in that respect but i'm going to put the video on and josh is going to do a bit of audio description so we're back on the familiar uh, blue tiled, blue mosaic tiled landing of uh, Jew's cottage. I assume it's a landing. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then hopefully the video will start in a second. And then on the right hand side there's a hair, on the left there's a frog. Uh, and I heard. Oh. I was going to say, they appeared to in a kind of red arrows styly. They both kind of split off, but then the frog uh, re-emerged, hopping um, along the finish line rather than across the finish line. <laughs> um, but I do believe that, that will be a, another victory for uh, Newham, I believe. I know, that's about four or five in a row. That's excellent. Yes, yes. London 2012 scores again. It was a bit wild, wasn't it, that frog? <laughs> Where is the sergeant that just pick between three of them to decide which gold medal collection the teddy will have? We still have just the one gold plastic mare's souvenir medal from 2012, but our teddy bear will still wear it with pride, particularly when we can decide what it's actually called. Or even if he's a si he's a she, but simply wearing... Yes, non-gender specific or non-traditional gender attire. I don't know. We'll have to discuss that one later. But in the meantime, you'll be glad to know we're moving on to Josh and his report on gaming and sport. Uh, yeah, so gaming this week. Um, I've been playing a lot of old or older games, um, mainly through the subscription services that we've talked about Um 
previously. So I've been playing a, a couple of games where both of them are kind of sequels to games that I'd played um, previously that had come out between, well, there's two of them that kind of 2016, one came out last year, and then there was another one that came out in 2016. So they're not old games, but certainly kind of not, not new, certainly for the 2016 games. Um, what are it, those games? So um, I've played Gears of War 4 and Gears of War 5, and then I'm currently playing something called Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Um, Could I just ask you, Josh, because I didn't hear the first one correctly and we don't have the captions on at the moment. Can you just say the first one again? Uh, it's called Gears of War. Um, Gears uh, of War. Yes, it's an army kind of first, per first person shooting game. Where you fight kind of, I'm not entirely sure what they are. Um, weird <laughs> monster creature things. Um, but one of there's two things that I really wanted to hit on on the those games that you know I think they are rated as as 18. Um, but it gives you the options in the settings to completely turn off any swearing, any gore, any blood, and it's so you can play it as a. I mean, you're still running around shooting things, I guess, but you can take out a lot of the more graphic elements i i guess um so if that is something you're not comfortable with but you still want to enjoy a kind of military action you know and, and the story of the you know there's five games so there's a you know a long story to to kind of follow through um you can still kind of do that and play the the challenge of the game um and i only played it on kind of the medium difficulty um and died quite a lot <laughs> but you you can play it. I imagine the hardest difficulties would be uh, even worse, but there's also a setting that if you die at any point, it restarts the entire game, <laughs> which I wasn't quite brave enough to do, because um, that seems quite extreme, and knowing me, I'd get to the very end uh, and like run off a cliff or something, um, which would be quite wounding. Um, but the other thing I want to talk about, and it was something I noticed in, in Gears of War 5, uh, when you're doing the kind of initial setup, it always asks you to fiddle with the brightness and kind of set how big your screen is. Um, but then it also, and it kind of wasn't in a hidden menu, uh, was all of the settings around kind of accessibility, so colorblind settings, subtitles, subtitle size, all that sort of stuff. Um, so really quite sophisticated because I haven't seen any kind of colorblind settings on anything else and it is something that people seem to be so unaware of and yet it's such a common issue yeah i think lots of ga certainly newer games have that functionality um you know especially because lots of things use kind of markers and to you know tell you what you're supposed to do and where to go and a lot of the times they can be color coded but obviously if you're colorblind it doesn't help you much <laughs> knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, it's extraordinary as somebody who's new to gaming, hearing that it's standard, and yet very few websites are compliant with the law in terms of contrast and all sorts of things. I mean, as an organisation, well, Robin will know this as business director, you know, he leads on the consultancy, but we, we do offer a whole range of training services. And one of the things that I always have to point out to people is the people who design the themes of websites and Eventbrite and all of these things aren't even in the UK. It's not their duty to comply with the law. You know, people go, well, why aren't these things compliant? And you think, well, because it's your, it's actually your responsibility. We use a WordPress theme, which is a kind of pre-produced design. It's the only one that meets the access standards in full. And yet, apparently, if I go and play a game it's going to take account of the fact not just that you need captions but what size and what font and all you might be colorblind I mean again yes it sort of reminds me of a conversation I was having last week about doing training in kind of a broader sense with very high-powered corporate people and you know chief executives and so on and talking about having rainbow flags on their desk and so on and you thinking my goodness you know how has it come to this that the bankers are actually better at doing diversity and inclusion than the public sector? But um, but there you are, back to gaming. Sorry, you know that's fine, and you, you are absolutely right. And I think you know, as I was saying, lots of games I think have that setting, 
but the fact that it was so prominent, it it was unmissable. It was part of the start of do you need this? I thought was really good. And then the other thing, and it's something I'd never seen before, um, Microsoft have something called the accessibility controller or, or something that uh, similar. And it's basically, it's a whole set of kind of peripherals um, specifically developed with uh, people that have issues with kind of hand function and mobility that can't use a standard controller. So they've done loads of work with disabled gamers to create this kind of line of products to enable them to play games. Um, and in that same startup screen with kind of the color blindness and things like that in the corner, it said, um, you know, click this whatever button it was. And um, if you have an accessibility controller to set that up and map it. And, you know, obviously that's a function but it's, again, it's not buried in a menu somewhere down the line that you never know. It's prominently, it's I think the second or third screen you see after all, you know, the logos of the people that made it. And I just thought it was really cool that they've not only gone through the effort of making the controller, making the game work with the controller, but they've made it really obvious that like, look, hello guys, if you've got this, you can play our game. Look, it's here, we'll help you do it. Um, and I know that sounds really silly, but I thought the fact that they've just that extra step to, to make it really clear, I just thought was really nice and really um, cool. Yeah, anybody who uses access features would not find, yeah, that's silly. I mean, one of the things that every time you do these reports, I come to the conclusion yet again that Microsoft is ahead of Sony in terms of accessibility and thinking about these things. We have a PlayStation 4 because it was about the only console left in the UK at the beginning of May when I was 58 and decided to treat myself given that we were shielding till the 1st of August and as it turned out beyond so there wasn't really a choice it wasn't about kind of Xbox or PlayStation it was is there a single console left for sale in the UK and I found one but yeah I mean I think ultimately if other people don't step up you know those are the things that are going to put people ahead and I think it's great that access is being seen as something as mainstream as it should be and really is, as opposed to something that only affects a tiny number of people. Because certainly as you get older, you know, and I'm finding this just in my late 50s, you know, what you can see and particularly kind of what's produced in terms of time. continue to play games in their 60s 70s 80s and beyond but absolutely need those access facilities yeah i mean it, it's like the government want us all to lose weight but making the uh, calorific value of foods really really tiny on a jar does not help <laughs> just because it says it's small it doesn't make it any less <laughs> yes i know well we are the the three ages of shielding here, including Josh, our student, and I think we're the different ends of those issues as well, because what I'm finding is that as all of the food keeps shrinking in order to stop it getting too expensive, I'm shrinking because, yeah, I've got a fixed income and a fixed diet and um, and now there's less calories. So whether they're in tiny little letters or not, you know, that kind of the fact that they've cut the package size by 10% you know, means that ultimately the calories have gone down and so on and so forth. Yeah, we've probably got presenters who are struggling to stay at our weight and presenters who are struggling to lose weight. Not because the government says so, I think, Robin, but because you think it's the right thing to do. And actually, just touching on lockdown for a minute, you don't have to support the government to support what is happening. You know, you don't have to think the government's right about everything to think they're right about lockdown. You know, we don't do these things because we're told to do them. We do them because they're the right thing to do. And indeed, and I think it's the only reason that the Prime Minister has agreed to lockdown because it's the only thing to do. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that. And I didn't know if you wanted to add anything before we move on to sport. Yeah, if I, if I may, I, I'm just thinking about the NHS and trying to sort of support the NHS as much as possible, please, please, please don't use fireworks in your garden. Um, 
don't use fireworks unsupervised and don't use fireworks where they're going to upset animals, either domestic or wild or bird life. Um, you know, I, I'm really, really anxious because the fire, the various fire, fire services have issued all sorts of warnings and, you know, basically begging people to be sensible. Um, and it is part of protecting our NHS as well, you know, and our veterinary services. We don't need to be going up to A&E because we've done something foolish with a firework or take our pets up there because somebody's done something dangerous. I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, I remember as a child, and um, because we ran a nursery school from the ground floor, we had a big, long, safe garden, you know, much bigger than the gardens in Newham, which are all far too small to be letting off fireworks. And somebody had a sparkler and that just slipped through. They lost the grip. It slipped through their fingers and the whole of their fingers were burned. And again, they ended up in hospital. So people think sparklers are safe and they're absolutely not. So that is absolutely right. But I think on that happy note, we will pass back to Josh to finish the sports and gaming report. But thank you for that, Julie. I think it's really important because... All of us want to do something to support the NHS and that can just be as simple as staying at home when you don't want to stay at home and not letting off a firework when you want to let a firework off. And bingo, you can feel really good about yourself. Uh, yeah, so the move on to sport. Um, the one final thing on gaming, and I'm going to touch on it more either next week or the week after when I've actually finished the game, um, is that one of the main characters in Gears 5 is an amputee and is a kind of frontline soldier and kind of doing all of the you know big part of the teams so it's going to be really interesting to kind of see where that character goes and how that's developed in the story um, and yeah, but like i said i've only played kind of the first uh kind of act of the game so once i've finished it and i can tell you a little bit more uh, i will um and then quickly moving on to stalks i'm aware of the time uh we talked about the Six Nations um, having their final week last week. Um, England won the men's and women's Six Nations. Uh, but then yeah. the, kind of the special congratulations, I guess. I don't doubt any of them are watching, but if any of the England women's team happened to be watching, uh, they won a uh, back-to-back Grand Slams, which means they, they kind of didn't lose a game uh, in any of the Six Nations, um, which is quite an achievement. And then to do it back-to-back -back as well, um, is a kind of real achievement and it comes on the back of them kind of finally getting professional contracts and, and things like that and all of the kind of work that the RFU have done to really promote and develop the women's game in England but then also develop it professionally as well um, and it's kind of nice to see that come into fruition I guess and hopefully they can kind of carry that through uh, and, and continue uh, and the other thing a little bit kind of follows on from what from what Julie was saying around kind of being sensible. Um, it's not necessarily about sport, but it's about kind of physical health. You know, going into lockdown, the government has said you can kind of go outside and get your your daily exercise, providing you stay safe. Um, obviously, if you can't go out, you know, you, you can still do exercise at home. And we talked about it kind of right at the start of lockdown that exercise is it's whatever it is to you you know you don't have to go and run 10k if you know walking around the lounge for a couple of minutes and doing some stretching is what gets your heart rate up and you're breathing heavy then 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 do that um and the other thing i wanted to talk about and this is from my own personal experience you know i i spent most of my life as a sports person um so i'm kind of quite aware of what my body is telling me and and when things aren't kind of going right uh and then yesterday i was sitting just kind of doing some emails and all of a sudden got really dizzy felt really sick um and it was purely because just being in the house all the time losing track of time i hadn't been eating enough i hadn't been drinking enough um you know and and luckily i was and also kind of with my uni background I was able to recognize that I've got something called hydrotabs, which is a sports thing for hydration that's kind of full of electrolytes and salt, which don't taste great. But if you drink it fast enough, you don't notice. Um, so I was able to kind of take that and then go and sleep it off and get some food. Um, 
that actually, you know, if you are living by yourself or, or things like that, you know, in this time, do take care and make sure you are getting plenty of fluids, getting plenty of food. You know, it really comes back to that structure and daily timetable that we were talking about. And yes, I mean, quite a number of the people who would usually come out to participate in activities in East London in the mornings have been following that structure at home. But absolutely, just because you're not going out to work or to uni, it's about saying this is breakfast time, this is mid-morning break, this is lunch time, and making sure, you know, like you say, actually that's self-monitoring. Because the government have been, I keep saying the government, and like I say, we don't have to do it because the government says, but people have been you know, making the point, shall we say, that you need to look after yourself, you should still go in, you know, have treatment and so on. But we can minimise those demands on the NHS. And all of us who are managing without as much help as we would usually have, again, that trying to avoid accidents, making sure you've had enough to drink and making sure you've had enough to eat is absolutely critical. Because like you were saying, once you get dizzy, you know, then life becomes much more dangerous. But um, on that happy note, I just want to flag up Friday's show and then we will finish with Robin's poem. On Friday, we always start by dressing up to go out to stay in. None of our items really became out of date over the summer and now they're bang up to date again. But what we do is we dress up as if we were going to go out. And then we either stay in and do an online activity or it was just imaginary, but it was great dressing up. You might have clothes you haven't worn for months that you just really like to take a photo in or a video even and send us. You might want to go on a wonderful imaginary journey and tell us all about it. You know, Julie's been going to the moon and the bottom of the ocean. But yes, please do dress up to go out to stay in and this has been going on so long we are also now taking pictures of dressed up pets <laughs> say no more this is the depths to which we have sunk we would love to see your pets dressed up to go out to stay in we'll also have robin will be playing us out with live music we will be talking about visual art we have a Friday Art Club now running on Zoom around still life. So we'll have the, some of the still lifes, but we'll also have the image of that still life for you to join in from home and much, much more. So we'd love to see you again on Friday at three o'clock. And next week, not only do we have the usual live stream, but our festival starts next Thursday. So from Monday's show onwards for the next five weeks, we will be talking as well as the usual things, a great deal about the fantastic programme we've got of artists and companies from all over the UK and beyond. They'll all be presenting work free. All of that work has got opportunities to join in from home and it's really, really exciting. So it's goodbye from us in East London and we'll have goodbye from Josh and finish with Robin's poem. Uh, goodbye from me. See you all on Friday. <laughs> okay. So, this poem is simply entitled Morning. And, revitalised, I surveyed the scene from my horizontal vantage point. Life peeps around the corner of our slightly furled drapes. I stretch and receive a reminder from my somewhat anxious joints that even the best night's sleep won't allow me to entirely escape the duress of impairment that lives within. Yet, I will not succumb, I will overcome, I will get done all that is needed to make this life fulfilling. I reach for a fix, for vitamin D to course through my veins, the tonic of existence, the fuels for my living, the success of impairment that lives within. Beyond the glass house, my fragility is forgotten. I drink till my lungs are full, sweet dew flavouring my essence, bursting effervescing my primordial instinct begotten. Every morning delivering a resplendent renaissance, oppression doused, I live life to the full. 
disability without. Thank you and see you Friday.